So before we start talking about instruments and how we use instrumental variables, one very important concept we need to talk about with econometrics is this idea of endogeneity and exogeneity, and the difference between the two and why we care about this. Um, so to start with, we're going to go back to our favorite causal question that we've been looking at throughout the semester that all econometricians love. Um, it's this question of, does education make you earn more money? Um, does going to college for an additional year make you earn more money over your lifetime? Does getting a master's degree in public policy or public administration help with your earnings? Hopefully it does. That's why you're here. Um, and so we can answer this causal question. Um, we have a very simple diag right here saying education goes to earnings. Um, if you notice, it's backwards time-wise. Um, it starts with education here and then points to earnings. Normally we would draw a diag having education be at the far end pointing towards earnings so it's going left to right. Um, but throughout this um, lecture I have it reversed so that it corresponds to the equations that you use to estimate these things. And so if you look at this we have an equation that says earnings is equal to a whole bunch of covariates um, or in this case, just one covariate, education. And so the regression model that you run is this idea of earnings, there's your outcome variable, equals some linear function of education. And so that is what we have here, estimating earnings. Um, this lines up with what we've been learning throughout the semester. There's your outcome variable or your dependent variable. Education, on the other hand, is what we call a policy variable or a program variable. It is the, the thing that you care about, the thing that you can manipulate, or that if you can't manipulate in the, in the case of education, it's the thing that you care about. Like, can you pass some policy that helps people gain more education so that then they can gain more earnings later on in life? Um, so that is our policy variable. Um, the other components of this equation that are important, um, you have your beta zero. Um, that's the intercept. That's part of just having a linear model. You need to have the line cross the y-intercept at some point, and then it has some slope, and that's the beta 1. And then this epsilon here is the error term. It's all of the stuff that can't explain, um, all of the stuff that, that explains earnings that's not education, that we can't measure, is what that is. Um, it's important because there's not like a direct one-to-one -one relationship between education and earnings. There's a whole host of other things that cause earnings. Education is one part. All of that other stuff is contained in this error term right here. Okay, so let's say we run this regression. Um, we use R, we say LM earnings tilde education. We run it and we get a beta coefficient for beta one there. And then we interpret it as the causal effect of having an additional year of education on earnings. Can we legally talk about causation in this case? No, and hopefully at this point in the semester you know that that is no. Um, there's a whole host of reasons why that is not the causal effect of education on earnings. Um, we've talked about omitted variable bias. There's a whole host of other things inside this error term here that we're not controlling for that might mitigate or boost or do something to the education effect. We can't see it. Um, if we talk about this in DAG language, there are a whole host of unclosed back doors that cause both education and earnings and confound that effect. And so we don't have all the back doors closed, and so we can't believe, we can't talk about beta 1 in causal language because of that. The other issue with it, which is similar to everything else, is there's this idea of endogeneity. Education is endogenous, is the official term that we have here. And so we're going to talk about what endogenous means and how that's related to these other things with unclosed backdoors and omitted variable bias. So before we talk about endogenous, we're going to talk about the opposite of endogenous, which is exogenous. So an exogenous variable um, means that it's not the value of the variable is not determined by anything else in the model. DAGs help a lot here. So in DAG language, it just means that it's a node that has no arrows pointing into it. Um, meaning it's not determined by, there's no other nodes in the model influencing education. So in this DAG right here, this simple DAG, education is exogenous. There's nothing pointing into it from any direction. It is just by itself, education is a thing. People do it, people don't do it. Nothing influences that. 
um, apart from randomness. And so that choice then leads to earnings. So if we believe that, we can call education exogenous. Um, hopefully you feel that that is a fairly um, simplistic story, goofy story that doesn't actually make sense. Um, as it's drawn here, education is exogenous, but in real life, it's not. Um, so endogenous means that the value of the thing, the value of education, is determined by other things in the model. Um, so in DAG language, again, this is why we use the DAGs, it just means it's a node that has arrows coming into it. And so if we look at education here, it's no longer exogenous because ability, some unmeasured abilities, like your ability to earn money and to go to school, that is something inherent in everybody, and that causes both earnings and education. And so because of that, education is now endogenous. Um, there's parts of education that are explained by possibly the random choice to just go to school. Um, but also there's a whole host of things that we've wrapped up in ability here that causes education and causes earnings. The fact that it causes earnings as well isn't as important for endogeneity as just the fact that ability feeds into education and so education is no longer exogenous. There's something else explaining it. So that's all endogenous means. It means that arrows are coming into the point. So if we look at this here, in this case, education is endogenous um, because ability is helping to explain education. Um, if ability did not flow into education there and education was all by itself, then it would be exogenous. Okay. Um, if we look at the math equation for these things um, with the betas that we've been looking at before, when you have endogeneity, um, those relationships that we can't see um, that cause education that are outside of this model are inside that error term right here. And so in this case, education is related to some part of education itself um, like the, you decide on a whim just to go to get more school, um, that's exogenous. But it's also related to stuff that we can't observe, some stuff that's inside that epsilon, that error term, and we can't see it. Um, but there's a relationship there between education and the unobserved stuff. And so there's the endogeneity. Um, if these two things are related, the main variable that you care about and the stuff that you can't see, there's a relationship there. And so because of that, you have endogeneity, um, if we look at it mathematically. So exogeneity in education would look, if, if it was purely exogenous, it would be that the choices to get more education are basically random. Um, where some people decide they want to and some people decide they don't want to go to school and it's not related to anything in their environment, it's not related to anything in their history, they just decide at random to do it. Um, if we think about it like a randomized controlled trial, some of them are assigned to more education and some are assigned to not more education and that decision is fairly random. Um, there are parts of education that look like that, um, where you might decide on a whim to go get more school. Um, but lots of it is also influenced by endogenous choices um, or endogenous factors like ability, like um, income, um, like time, um, number of kids in your family. There's a whole host of things that also influence the decision to get more education. Um, so when we're trying to find the causal effect of education on earnings, ideally, we want to know the effect of the exogenous part of education, the decision to just go get more education because. Um, but when we draw this DAG here, we can see that it's not an exogenous decision. There's other things that help influence that. What we have in the DAG here is ability. Um, so part of the decision is to get more education is influenced by um, just outside chance. Um, but part is influenced by ability. And so what we want to do is be able to separate out the effect of ability on education um, so that we only see the exogenous part of education on earnings. And hopefully by this point in the semester, you're fairly familiar with how to do that. If we look at the DAG here, we have a backdoor. 
um, which is ability, where it's influencing both education and earnings. And so what we can do is close that back door. We can either control for it in a model, um, we can use inverse probability weighting, we can do matching, we can do a whole host of tricky mathy things to take out the effect of ability on education and earnings, and all we're left with is the effect of education, the ability-less education on earnings. Um, and we've been doing that throughout the semester here. And so what we can do is if we can adjust for ability, all we're left with is the exogenous part of education, um, which leaves us with this math equation here. If we ran a simple regression, we could control for ability. That's our beta 2 there. And then assuming this DAG is right and complete, once we control for ability, the beta for education will be our causal effect. And so what we can do is look at some simulated data here. So if we look at these model results, um, this is a side-by-side -side regression table. We've seen these throughout the semester. Um, these are two different models. You have the unadjusted model, where this is just um, wages are explained by education. Um, and so according to this unadjusted model, it says that an additional year of education boosts your wages by 12 points. Uh, these are, this is fake data, so $12 an hour. Sure, that's a big effect. Um, so, and it's a highly significant finding. You can see the, the p-value is low, the standard errors are tiny. Um, and so that means that getting an additional year of education boosts your income by a lot. But we're not controlling for ability. Um, that's, so this has both the exogenous and the endogenous parts of education in it. But if we run this, this model here where we include ability as a regressor in our regression model, um, that takes out the effect of ability on education. That closes that back door. And so what we're left with is the true effect of um, education on wages, which is $9.42 here, which is smaller than the $12. And so that shows that some of the wages, some of the boosts in wages that you get is based on ability, but it's also based on education. And so we can say legally that this 940, this 924 is our causal effect, um, assuming our DAG is right. Um, so what we have here, if we look again, so that coefficient there, the 1224 is wrong, um, while the 924 is right because we've adjusted for the back doors and that is our correct finding. Um, the issue with doing that though is that we can't measure ability. There's no magical score for ability that would be in a spreadsheet somewhere and you can include that column in your regression. It's a whole host of things that are all wrapped up into a whole host of other factors like um, income and parental income and where you live and geography and um, race and discrimination and there's a whole host of things that influence ability. We can't measure it. So that means we can't actually run this model. Um, it's an illegal model um, because we don't have ability. That thing is unmeasurable there. So what we're left with is this. We can include education because we can measure the number of years people go to school. Um, but once we do that, the ability that, we're, that is confounding both education and earnings gets moved into that error term, and we can't see it anymore. Um, but the fact that we have an error term and a coefficient that are tied together means that education is endogenous, which is something we don't like. If we measure the effect of education on earnings now, um, it's not the true effect. It's not the exogenous as if it was random effect, um, which is a problem. So what can we do? We should just give up. Just kidding. We can, we can do cool mathy things. What if we could hypothetically separate that education variable into two parts, into the endogenous part of education, stuff that happens because of a whole host of other nodes in the DAG feeding into it, and the exogenous part, kind of the random decision to go and get more education because we care about the exogenous part. So if we could somehow extract just the exogenous part out of it, that would give us the causal effect, um, which would be cool. And so what we can do, we have this. This is what we can measure with the data. We have earnings, we have education. We'd like to get ability. We can't because ability is stuck inside that error term. But if we could somehow split the exogenous part and the endogenous part of education here, um, 
what that essentially lets us do is um, we can make a new error term. If we can take away the exogenous part um, right here, that's the thing we care about. Over here, this is the ability, this is everything else that's explaining education that we can't measure, um, which is part of the error term. If we could somehow pull that education part and make a, a new error term here called W, um, what we would be left with in the end is this model here, where we have earnings is equal to the exogenous part of education. If we could get to this point right here um, with just the exogenous part, of education. Then we can talk about the causal effect of deciding to go and get an additional year of education um, on earnings um, without any of the endogeneity. There's no more endogeneity here. This is purely exogenous. There's no error. There's no arrows coming into this DAG anymore or this DAG node anymore. Um, and we can talk about causation. So how can we do that? Um, ideally, we want to get this equation. How do we find just that ex the education, the exogenous part of education? We use an instrument. And that is the whole point of instrumental variables regression. It lets you split um, your policy variable into an ex exogenous part and an endogenous part so that you're only left with the exogenous part and you can talk about causation using that exogenous thing. Um, and so that's why we do this instrumental variable stuff. And so in the next section, we'll talk about what an instrument is and how that actually works.